people want to hear more about this lobing issue with very low frequency trapping or pressure trapping in okay. corners, especially yeah. how that, how well, that works. Tell well, us the state, you, you have a, uh, just, you have to break it up to three different positions. Okay. You have a mode going from one, one set of walls to another that are parallel to each other. Okay. And that gives you one set of modes. Okay. And that's anywhere along that wall. So it could start from the corner and go all the way to the center and all the way to the next corner. That that mode will be the same. Okay. You do the same thing in the other direction, you know, 90 degrees to that. You'll have a mode there. Okay. And then you're going to have a mode between the floor and the ceiling. Okay. So you have three modes going on and they're all combining together at the surface. Well, when the surfaces all come together, you're going to have a mode on one corner, like so. You're going to have another one on the corner here like this, 90 degrees out, and another one here on the floor, okay? So that could be another 90 degrees out, but a different direction, okay? Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a, a lobe coming off, okay? You have the mode coming off the wall here, and you have a mode coming off the wall here, and they're going to combine pressure. Mm -hmm. If you have a combined pressure, I mean, you can uh, you can actually show that. Remember, I gave you that uh, uh, that uh, 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 ripple tank thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So what you want to do is put yourself a source in a in a corner, it just even just a two dimensional corner. Okay. Put a source somewhere, you know, out in space between those two. Okay. And then let them bounce off the walls. You'll see how the lobing happens. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, and that, that'll give you a perfect picture. And that also and he, explains when, when you when you did testing for for Richard, uh, you put them in the corner and you got a double peak response. Right. And it was because it was some there was cancellation going on there due to that. Also, it, it was also uh, activating the the empty space behind behind the absorber in the corner. So it was a, it was like a trapped airspace. Okay. So we can't, you know, you can't allow that to happen either. So you need to fill that with something solid. Everybody says, we'll just put a piece of board on top. No, you have to actually fill it with something. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if you're going to try to make a corner absorber, everybody says, well, just put something across the corner and leave an empty space behind it. No, because that causes other problems. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, I'll be, uh, as soon as I finish the uh, reports for Richard, uh, Richard is indicating he's more than willing to release uh, some of these uh, information things so we can see how we got to that point of how we're talking about measuring. Yeah. So I, I have some diagrams of, of how, it, how, these kind of diffuse, or these kind of absorbers are put on a, a, spe a specific wall and what the spacing should be so that you don't have interference between them. And, really? and that, that is a big deal. We did not realize how big deal it was ourselves. Yeah. Uh, but, but diaphragmatic absorbers act differently than other absorbers do. So they, 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 they you know, other ones work on velocity and kinetic energy. Uh, these work on pressure. Okay, and, and because of that, it's usually 90 degrees out of phase of the rest of the stuff. Because remember, pressure is always always lagging to velocity. Right. And it's just right by 90 degrees. So that's what we have to deal with. Okay. Excellent. On that, on that, on that note, what do you what's your take on the Fraunhofer VPR that has been very popular on on forums and stuff and so diy stuff if if they want to build something like that and test it in a facility that can actually test it then you'll find out exactly what it does and what it doesn't do as far as theoretically theoretically a lot of things should work <laughs> okay <laughs> the, the problem is that the, the things don't always work the way theory says it does that's that's why we have experimental so you have theoretical physics and you have experimental physics. Theoretical says, oh, yeah, my idea is that this should work this way. Okay, well, good. That's what experimental physics is for, is to take that and, and actually test it in real life and see, does it really do that? And if it really does that, that now you've proven a theory. Okay? But until that time, it is an unproven theory. 
Now, they're both theories. That's the other thing you got to keep this in mind. That the, the word theory is kind of bandied about all the time about, you know, well, I have this idea. It's a theory. No, it's an idea. A theory yeah. says that you put it together with, with science and say, well, okay, according to science, it should do this. Okay. And, and then the scientific process says, okay, well, if it should do this, let's form an experiment that will test that process. Okay. Right. And you test it. And then you either find out it works or it doesn't work. And if yeah. it doesn't work, then it's an unproven theory and you throw it out and, and it's gone. Okay. Well, uh, the way I explain to... it, um, I, I, I explain it. I use, uh, I use Richard Dawkins description scientific because he's a biologist says a, a scientific theory is the closest thing to fact that we have because right. it's tested and proven, et cetera. Anything else is not a theory in scientific. Right. It's it's a hypothesis or an idea, right. just an idea. Yeah. And yeah. And, yeah. Well, but but but, but in, in in most scientific work, a uh, hypothesis is an idea. A theory is an idea backed up with uh, proven scientific facts that have been proven in the past that may or may not apply to this 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 hypothesis. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that that's that's the next step above a hypothesis. So you yeah. have a hypothesis, the lowest level, level. Then you have a theory, and then you have a either unproven or a proven theory. Okay. Right. Now you can convert the proven theory to a fact if you want to, but I think in 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 science, <sighs> you're talking about semantics here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is true. This is true. This is true. The thing is. Uh, you know, when, when we really get down to it, the things that we thought were facts were a little, still a little fuzzy. <laughs> yeah. And, and they and, shall and, remain fuzzy for a long time yet, I think. Well, they, they, they will remain, <laughs> again, we're back to semantics here, okay? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if, you're talk, if you're talking about normal language, then proven theories are facts. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now but in science... Yeah. But it's scientific Actually, it's a lot clearer. Yeah, it, but but scientific theory leaves a lot more open. Okay, so okay. so what happens is science. If you talk to scientists as a general rule, they will say, "Yeah, facts are facts until they're unproven." <laughs> okay, and 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 so that that's one reason we don't use that word very often. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so, so you have proven theories. You have unproven theories. Okay. okay that's the closest thing you can get to a fact from a scientist is a proven theory. <laughs> okay. It's like yeah. the proven theory of gravity. Okay. Or, mm -hmm. or Newton's laws of physics. Okay. Right. Uh, you know, so what happens is we take a, a theory and we convert it to a law. If it's something that's a close, it's the closest thing to a fact. Okay. But you'll never use it. You'll never hear the word fact from a scientist. Okay. Mm. It just doesn't happen. Okay, so yeah. you can you can ignore this whole thing when people say it's a fact that's done this. No, it's not a fact. It's a proven theory, or or you know, it's the closest thing to a law of physics. Okay, and you know, so <laughs> I I hate to sound kind of fuzzy about it, but science is kind of fuzzy in some respects. 